So today's video is going to show you how to disassemble and then reassemble a flow hive flow frame. There is two methods of disassembling or breaking or pulling apart these frames. The first one is often done accidentally um, when you either drop it or you mishandle it slightly. The second one is definitely a deliberate um, method. So the first one is simply called breaking it. So if you hold the frame, you can bend, bend the frame and you'll see that pulling apart. This often happens when you drop it, but to separate these, pull it slightly out and literally bend that apart. It will then come to pieces and that's done. Always when you're breaking these apart, put all of the frame into its own separate tub or bucket or something like that as you don't want to end up when you're putting it back together with a frame that has too many pieces or not enough. These wires that hold it all together, when it comes time to putting it back together there is a special way. If you hold it by the swage or the crimp, the seal at the top, there are two different lengths. So see how the top one is a fraction shorter than the bottom one? The short one goes on the bottom of the frame, the long one goes across the top of the frame. So now I'll show you how to pull it apart slightly gentlier, gentler, sorry, <laughs> rather than just breaking it. Okay, so this frame now we're going to pull apart by removing the wires themselves. So this frame here you can see it's pretty disgusting, it's had wax moth in it, it's been outside in the grass, it's been basically pretty ill treated so I need to pull these apart to clean them. So your top frame, or the top wire, and your bottom wire. This is the back of the frame, that's where you harvest from. This is the front of the frame. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the bottom wire at the front of the frame. We just use a small screwdriver, put it in next to the swage, slide it along, and unhook it from that clip. That now takes that off. As you can see, they do get gummed up with propolis and wax. That then goes in the tub, and as you can see, it's now very easily come apart. Put all the components into its own tub, so that it doesn't get mixed up with any other. It's as easy as that. So how does a flow frame actually work? What I've done is using a dry erase marker, I have highlighted the two different types of blades that we have. The red ones are the solid immovable objects. They create the shape of the frame. This is what they look like when you pull them apart. And then the black ones are the movable parts. And that's what they look like. So they're a fair bit smaller. Now this frame has been used by bees. You can see they have created the seals between these frames made of wax. So I can flick that wax out. So at the moment these cells are set, as they're called, to create a cell. All they're doing is waiting for the bees to create that wax seal between the two parts of the frame. So what I'm going to do is pull the bung out of the end, insert the flow hive key, it's got a tapered end, you slide it in the bottom section of the top, I'm only going to slide it in about to there, just enough to twist it to offset those to create the channels. Now what that does is it breaks that wax seal and those cells will now move. It does take quite a bit of effort to do so and 
it's often handy if you have two keys to use two keys I'm doing that today because normally this would be inside my hive and so the other frames pressing against it will give it structure and rigidity and make it easier to turn but because this is sitting on my workbench it's a bit harder so I'm just going to use two keys and that's the sound of it popping those wax seals and you can see how those frames have now off centered and that now means that the honey has a drain and it can go down follows the flow down and because this normally has wax across the top that keeps the honey in goes collects down in that bottom chamber clicks down the bottom chamber and then it comes out into the tube so to reset these we pull the keys out slide the key into the top section of the frame and again twist it to reset those cells and now they're reset ready to go again so to break the seals slide in the bottom chamber and twist to reset it slide the key into the top chamber and twist and you can see that movement there what that looks like in the parts so these cells just sit nicely together So that's what it looks like when it's set. All we're doing up here is moving that up and that offsets them. So down sets, lifting it up offsets. So you can see how easily that moves, of course because there's no wax holding it, but there is a fair bit of movement there. So that's how the flow frames work to harvest. Stop. Okay, so now it's time to put a clean frame back together. This is one that I have prepared earlier. I find personally for me it's easier to separate the parts out into big parts, small parts, movable, non-movable. We have our end pieces, so that's the back, that's the front, your bungs and your caps. Also have our two Cables, the longer one goes on the top of the frame, the shorter one goes on the bottom. So this one here goes on the top, this one, let's, that one there, <laughs> goes on the bottom. Now it's not unusual, because you're putting twists in them, it's not unusual for them to knot themselves up like this. It's a bit of a pain, but it's just what they do. Now to put it together, the easiest way of doing it, is take the back of the frame where these normally sit take them out and roll it upside down start with the small movable part if you look carefully you'll see it's got a slight curve shape at the top and the bottom has got those pointy bits so for all of these frames the pointy bits go down so we put this is the top those pointy bit, it sits nicely in that, and now you can see how much movement is in there. Then we get the big part, and at the top, again, there's two pointy bits. They slot nicely into the top there, and it just sits nicely in place. Grab another small one, pointy bits down, movement. Grab another big one, pointy bits down. And you can see how these just nicely sit in place. Pointy bits down. And you just alternate large pieces to small pieces. We're going to do a speed up version of putting it all together. And then we'll come back with the next step.
So we're down to our last couple of pieces of the frame. This is where you get very careful to make sure you don't knock it over. Or in my case, I have a cat sitting right beside me on the bench. Just hope he doesn't twitch his tail. Right, so that's the last of those pieces. And then we put the outer part on. As you can see, everything careful. Everything slots together nicely. Now, before we go any further, we put a bit of string around the middle of it just to hold it nicely in place. Right. Now I have to extract two wires from underneath my cat. Can I have that back please? <laughs> it's not a game. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so once again, now that he's mark marked it up, I have to figure out which one's the short one. Right, so this one here on my thumb is the short one. The swage goes at the front of the frame. So we, in the top here, there is some little nicks. One, two, three. So we put it in the middle of those three nicks. Those other two can be used for adjustments if necessary. Bring it down, put in a minimum of one twist, depending on how many you need. And very carefully, this is where a lot of people claim it's easier to have two people, one helping. Unfortunately, my husband is working on the camera right now. And, thank you, slide it under. We'll carefully turn it this way. And this is where I use a handy dandy screwdriver. And I fight it and battle it to get it into place. This is by far the hardest part. There we go. So now we slide it down until it rests in these notches. <coughs> Excuse me. A bigger screwdriver probably would have helped. Plastic there that that wire strand is caught on. Now it's moving. And you can see why I tied it off with a bit of string. Can be a bit of a workout. Oh, that hurt. But now that that's in, see how that's now very loose? So now, ideally, we would have to put another couple of twists in that. I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> so now we gently roll the frame over. 
put back together the parts that have come apart and we do the same with the top so again carefully the swage goes at the front in this case sits there again one in this case I'm going to actually do three twists it means putting it back together is going to be a tad difficult and again bring it over the front given how easily that's going I'm putting some more twists in there one two so that's going to make a total of five twists one two three four five twists that's how you tension up these frames again it's going to come into this notch here Potentially I should have put a couple more twists in it given how easily it's going. That one's in. And that one's in. Goes into that little notch and into that little notch. So the top of that frame is still loose. I will tighten it up later and the bottom is very loose. But again, I'll tighten that up later. So that's how you put a frame back together. And you can take the string off and it doesn't all fall apart.